Yeah, so I have met I have made a quick uh, presentation. I will probably, I mean, John uh, I, is in holiday now. You know, America have holiday, guys. This is too weak, so I don't want to I bother him. <laughs> Are you American, Liza? Lisa? No, no, I'm not American. But I work in New York, so I, my holiday just lies today. That's why my schedule is wrong. Sorry. <laughs> and That's I'm fine. out, so I'm going to be on mute most of the time. Okay, no, that's good, that's good, no big deal. We are saying like maybe uh, on the week of the, not next week, but the week after, we can take week off. What do you think about that? Oh, that sounds good. And I yeah. won't feel bad for, for maybe being late on the second. <laughs> you know, it's it's Basti Day. Oh, I haven't heard that since It's important there, you know. Anyway, uh, okay. So I have said to Will, like, I couldn't complete this chapter. This chapter is you. Did you finish reading it or not? No, but I, I mean, I was also kind it's of relying fine. on the fact that I studied it like 10 years ago. So I'm being lazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. No big deal. So we probably have like the normal, normal distribution come later. We can add it to next week and, she, and maybe like plan some exercise. What do you think? And then... Okay. Start with uh, Monte Carlo uh, Markov chain letters. Okay. Well. Okay. Anyway, I will. I will. We are not many now, so I will write something. So this, this, I uh, because like John wasn't here, I didn't wanted to publish on the book, on the shared doc on the book. So I, 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 I use it on on another like. Uh, uh, whatever, but it's it's still air markdown, so I can easily copy past it. Uh, okay, that's it. It works here. Yeah. So the goals of today is practice building Bayesian models still and familiarize yourself with conjugacy, which uh, I will define a bit later. I don't know if anyone, uh, everyone is fine with Greek letters. We have lambda, mu, sigma, tau, and theta. And uh, it wasn't here, but we have also an appearance with gamma in these uh, chapters, which is like uh, something like, see, I have, I have added this. I like this toy. Mm. This is like that. I don't know if you see it. Is it working? Yeah. This yeah. is the big gamma. OK. <laughs> and uh, yes, this is also our last chapter on Bayesian foundation, meaning letters. Uh, I think we'll go like on more a bit more deeper stuff. Uh, okay, why are you are we using like this um, conjugate families? It's because like and why are you are we using this kind of uh, using them as a prior also? Is because like they're flexible, but at the end the author said they are not that flexible, so. I guess it depends on how flexible you think they are. I like, I think this is like obviously true, like the computational is. This is very easy. Like you can even some of them like do it with paper. You don't even need like Monte Carlo chain and stuff like that. And it's true, like they've they are very easy to interpret. Like for example, uh, on the beta binomial model we have seen, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, if we have a prior, which is beta, which is defined by two parameters and a data model, uh, which was uh, defined as a binomial uh, with n um, and um, trial and pull, up, pull out of the whatever. And uh, it, it leads to a, a beta distribution on posterior, which is basically the definition of conjugate families. You between the prior and the posterior, you are not changing the family of distribution, but you are changing its parameters, which for the beta binomial is the new alpha parameter become uh, alpha plus y, and the beta become, uh, this is a plus, this is not an equal, this is an error here. So here, I will have to correct that. Yeah, this is a plus here, that's it. Uh, and why they are, I think this is true that they are interpretable because like when you understand the distribution, 
you see the effect of n, which is usually the number of uh, sample you are drawing. And why, uh, which is uh, the, the stuff. So it's easy to understand the effects of the data model on the prior that produce the posterior, which will maybe not the case on other kind of model we'll develop later. That's it. Okay, I, I've tried my, my best, <laughs> but uh, the author Appreciate said- it. The author said it's pure joy, conjugate prayer. I'm not sure. I work it on that chapter. That's why I said this one sparked up, non conjugate prayer. Well, the author said, like, conjugate prayer, spark join. I kind of disagree. But so this is like, whatever, like, do the spark joy or not? Well, <laughs> it depends. I think, yes, on the inter I will agree on the interpretability, but uh, to understand. What's how do you go? Uh, how do you calculate them? Was difficult for me at least. Okay, we'll first go the so yeah, the gamma portion conjugate families. The the example is about like receiving fraud uh, phone call, like people who are basically like trying to to trap you in some kind of scam. And uh, at one point, one of the author estimate them like they receive five per day in the mean, but it could range from two to seven. And the question is what can model we can produce to estimate that? Instead of uh, starting with the prior, here we are starting with the model of the data. So here, this is another like famous uh, distribution model, which is the Poisson. I will pronounce it as the French guy, which basically the um, response variable, or I don't know what you call that, the Y is, uh, it will be explained by, the, with, is equal to the number of independent events, the event like you, having an event shouldn't influence uh, the next events, mm -hmm. uh, events that occur in a fixed amount of time. It's not necessarily always an amount of time, it's in some, in some kind of space. Because like, for example, as a geographer, we use the Poisson distribution sometimes in 2Ds, 3Ds, or whatever. But uh, it have a nice uh, probability mass function. So it's a discrete uh, distribution. So that's why it's probability mass function and not probability density function. Obviously, the probability mass function sum to one. So we good like on the definition of it. And it have a nice property that the mean equal the variance equal tau. So we are just have one parameters that everything is equal. It's can lead to some problem uh, sometimes, but that's it. Like, I think I will not go like in the definition of the probability mass function and stuff like that. Um, I have an error here. Okay, so I have drawn some of them. I'm failing at uh, tidyverse stuff, so I have done them in, in base error, which sometimes I think are easier. Uh, and uh, we can already see like, um, more we increase the number, the rate, uh, we will tend to come to some things that will look like a normal distribution, except it's a discrete distribution. Um, but we also see like, for example, uh, uh, um, on the one with five, like the mean is at five and the mod is at four. And the same, for example, the, po uh, the, the, one, the Poisson with one, the mean is at one and the mod is at zero, which I, I found it a bit like uh, strange, but I guess. It, it, can't, it can't be less than zero, can it? I was, I was reading no. that in it. Yeah, I don't think it can. It have like, uh, uh, I don't know, like stick. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, you need to count something. So mm -hmm. it cannot be negative because like it's a count of some events over time, over, over a period, over something. Yeah. I know cars, cars per hour or goals in a football match or whatever. Yeah, good example. Like... Uh, uh, like in my field, you can say number of trees 
count of trees in yeah. a plot. Uh, okay, so this is uh, like a bit. So the joint probability mass function. When we when we have done that, like let me go like on the top this one. This is like basically one uh, some like one draw of it. But what we will want is like we will have more more than one draw. So like for example, like on our example, you will sample like let's say like in one month you will draw uh, five days where you will count the number of uh, fraud uh, call you receive. And here on this graphic, we just have one draw. So now we want uh, like, let's say four or five draws. How we do that? So I haven't reproduced the whole um, demonstration, but basically because like the, the probability mass function sum to one, you can just multiply them and the result will sum to one. Uh, and so this is a nice property. This is like the, 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 this is this part like, and a bit of this part, like these two parts here, the sum here and the um, product here. Uh, this is like the, um, basically like you will do like the, the likelihood for and the joint probability for every uh, times, like let's say you have one sample, then two samples and three samples that you multiply each, uh, each uh, probability mass function and you get the joint probability mass function, which look like that at the end and can be summarized as that. Here, I change it a bit the order, like on the book, this term is behind, uh, be just, just here like, eh. because like uh, I have trouble with latex. Latex, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> so uh, some, per some, some bracket failed, whatever. So I just move it. What is nice uh, is this joint probability mass function just need the number of uh, the draw, let's say, and the sum of the y. So let's say like we have four, it will be just the sum of the four there. We are getting phone, uh, fraud phone call, we are sampling it, which make it like later. So we'll make calculate uh, calculation a bit simple and interpretable, I will say. Okay. So now we have like we have like uh, our data model, and we understand how we can have a likelihood with it, which is like basically what we want, like because like we will uh, get some data uh, later with the likelihood. Uh, then we need prior. So two will be positive because it can be negative, like you said. Uh, it can only be positive, and it's continuous. This is like another like. Uh, Case. Then this came in the chapter a bit out of the box. <laughs> uh, you have choice between three distribution, the gamma, the Weibull, and a particular case of the F, which I don't think, I don't remember its exact name. Uh, and the author quiz us. I think, I think everyone calls it the F distribution. Yeah. I've never heard anyone call it anything else. Anyway, so that's it. Um, and then they have to, and then they ask us, like trying to guess uh, which one uh, we should pick. There is a huge int in the name of the part oh, of the own. book. Yeah, so that's the gamma one. And why? Because like uh, both have this term here, this term, uh, the exponential uh, minus r uh, time tau which will make calculation easy. They do a demonstration. I have not taken the time to do it. Uh, it doesn't seem too complicated. It just used like some uh, power law, you know, like you will apply, a you, you have to identify that like, you have a constant Then you have to transform this constant following like some power flow. Not mathematically like hard, but I will probably fail it because I will not think of identifying the constant term. Anyway, uh, so we have we'll use a gamma prior. That the moment that they um, they will like introduce the gamma and exponential model models, 
I will just go to the exponential model. The exponential models is a special case of the gamma models. It's the case where the S parameters of the gamma distribution equal to one. This is like below. So we can simplify it. So this is, the, so now let's go like the gamma uh, models or distribution take two parameters, S and R, which probably stand for uh, shape and something. I have no idea of the R. I will assume like uh, some rates. I will assume rate, it will make sense, but uh, they didn't define it, so no idea. Uh, it's now provided probability density function because it's continuous as defined, I mean, as what we wanted. <laughs> uh, this is like the gamma term. So uh, this was a bit like, I will have to figure out a bit more like how to understand it. Uh, it just follow like what we decided like superior to zero. Uh, what is nice is like, and it gives like a bit of inside how the distribution works. It's like the mean uh, is basically the S parameter uh, ratio. The um, I will take the pen, so maybe it'd be better. Uh, this is here like uh, divided by R. So it's give like, I think this is intuitive to figure out what the mean at least. The mod is a bit different, but like it's close. So it, on, on big uh, number of, uh, on big like S, it shouldn't matter too much, but on small matter, it should matter. I mean, on small S, it will be more impactful. And the variance uh, depend mostly of R square because it's divided by R square and it's a, at the power like, more you have exponential, I mean, not exponential, well, per you get, and that's it. So keep that in mind because you will be quizzed on next slide. <laughs> is it good? Okay, I'm moving. I, I, I have a quick sure. question. That this might be really covered in the first few chapters, but is there a reason why we care about the mode so much? Like, I'm like formally mostly trained frequentist. So and then sort of like I, the first and second moments are like mostly mean and serious, but like I really, I don't, yeah. I can't think I'll of do, instances where you. I have to, oh, sorry. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, better. Okay. Um, yeah, I, what is the significance of caring about the mode? Is it a Bayesian thing? Because like, I mostly do use like the sort of frequentist paradigm. So, and then usually it's just like, I mean, I'm not sure I will provide the best answer. I will provide one and you will see if it's good or not. I think both Bayesian and Frequentist can use the mean. It's just like an aggregate you pull off the hat to summarize information. I think what's different with the Frequentist is like they do regression to the mean. So, it's oh, right, right. so, like, so I'm, I'm used to the mean. I just yeah. mean like, what is the significance of the mode? Because on, on, I really like have not really worked out the mode for anything except for like, exams back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they bring the modes no, and they didn't bring it on the previous chapter. You're, I think you're right on that. I don't remember it. Uh, maybe they are starting to complexify a bit uh, some idea. Because like a lot of time, the mean uh, will be bad at describing a distribution, not only on bimodal distribution, but only on some like, you know, when you have like distribution like that, let's see like something like that, like a distribution like that. If you take the mean, sometimes it will like uh, divide, like let's say the mod and the mean will probably like, doesn't mean like will be very, will be more different. Like the mean is a good, uh, to my point of view, it's a good summary description when you have like a bell shape distribution. <laughs> but uh, yes, I don't think it's Bayesian of frequentist. Like boss use it, boss use the mods, boss use the mean. What is particular to the frequentist, I think they use more uh, estimation using only the mean. To my understanding, I don't know if I make it myself clear. Like the regression to the mean, for example, 
like the classic re linear regression is a regression to the mean. So that means you just want to make prediction on average, which I think is different in the Bayesian approach, but it could be wrong. Uh, where like you want to make a prediction on all the distribution, not only on the average, which is the mean. I don't know if it makes sense. We can, we can add yeah, that. We'll, we'll the, see. Yeah, I just have that we can add, we can add that to the next. I can remember and ask other people what they think about it. But this is how I understand it. Uh, okay, you ready? Because it's a quiz. <laughs> okay. Uh, quiz. So now we have like, I, 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 I was better like doing like this uh, exercise with the, um, with the formulas and the graphics. So here you have like, I, I didn't take time to reproduce it. So I don't know how easy it is to do. Uh, so you have a gamma distribution. Uh, on the row, you just are increasing the S. And on the mm, no, on the colon, you are increasing the S, let's say like here. This is um, I'm so bad. Yeah, S increasing. And here, yeah, it's uh it's just the same, but with R uh plus one. So they ask us like what's happen when S is bigger than r and let me read like the option you have is it a a right skewed with a mean greater than one b right skewed with a mean less than r than one or c symmetric with a mean around one so right skewed distribution this is a and b what distinct them is like on one side, on the A, the, the um, mean will be greater than one, and the others, the mean will be um, less than one. First question. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure any of them are, uh, are right skewed. Uh, I mean, they are all, all of them. <laughs> I mean, I I agree. Like gamma four two is not that right skewed, but those are, and also like at gamma four and four one or two are less. Uh, I agree. Less, less, less yes, yeah. less crude than the rest, but they are all on the right side. Mm. You remember, it's it's not the, our hand in the screen; it's reverse. <laughs> I failed at that other time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is not right. It's my right. <laughs> yeah, right is here. Yeah, and left is here. For the statistician. <laughs> is, is right? Yeah. Right is right is is here. So is it where the tail is or where the chunk of the thing is? I yeah, it, it makes no sense, but I have learned to live with it. <laughs> to me, right is this end, and left is this end. So, but no. This is maybe maybe there is a correct explanation, but I don't have it. So right is here and left is that's it. So answer. You have two. We we are just three, so you can. Uh, I, I will also I will also help you, and let's say <laughs> S. Wait, can you uh, remind me what your question was again? I forgot. <laughs> equal S divided by R. Right, that's the mean, and then the, the variance is that's divided by yeah. R squared. Yeah, and the question is, is it right skewed with a mean greater than one, right skewed with a mean less than one, or symmetric with a mean around one, which should be a normal distribution, for example. So when S is greater than R, what's happened to the mean? Let's say, put an example, let's say four, equal s and r equal one what happens so that's the fairly flat one on what i would say is the right hand side yeah. but this is probably saying is, is, is the left hand side 
So that's quite a, quite a flat distribution there, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's very low. Uh, I I think with all of them, the means uh, on the right hand side. Though honestly, um, <laughs> that's my normal right, not not this not this right. Um, Sorry, I'm 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 not I'm not the statistician who put that rules. <laughs> I think it must have been an Australian statistician because it's completely the wrong way around. Um, Definitely. <laughs> okay, I will give you the answer. So this yeah. is the A1. So it's right skewed. Like yeah. this is right skewed. Yeah. And like every time S is greater than R, obviously it will like here, it will mean like four divided by one. So it's greater than one. Every time like the S is greater than R, we have like, we are going mm. to the left. Like see the mean is here, it's on four. Uh, let's, let's clean everything a bit. Can you remind me the, 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 what do you call the properties of S and R? They are like integers? Positive they are just integers. They did, they, in the book, they didn't define it, so. Do uh, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't define it. More than, I see. I assume they are integers. What? Well. Anyway, I can't delete everything. You will survive with that. So next question: What happened when S is inferior to R? And same option, but no, it changed. Obviously, when I will give no need that. Like obviously, when S is lower which is only this case here, the, the mean will be lower than one by definition. Yeah. That's it. And then this one is a bit harder. Uh, which one of these two distribution have more variability? Is it gamma 2020 or gamma 2100? 2100. I will. Okay. By I, will, I, will, I will help you. I will, yeah, but that's that's a trick. Where am I? Move. Is that the trick question? I have to. All right. This is like this is the var. So what happens? So the variance. What happens when yeah. we have twenty or when we have hundred? Yeah. So it's gonna be our. Oh, right. It's smaller. It? It's smaller, it's smaller right? because it's in the fraction. denominator. Yeah, it's a fraction. Well, anyway, you know, <laughs> making error, making make learn, make 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 learn stuff. I, I have just like I have write it, so I, I know I'm stupid, so I write and <laughs> intuition know, is really up, <laughs> and, intuition <laughs> are bad. My first <laughs> yeah, intuition are bad, so that's it. That's all I learned. Uh, application, no. Woo. So this. This was the easy part, I guess. Like, no, we have like that. We know, like, we want five calls on the prior per day. So that's on, on mean. So it's basically the mean is around five. So that's mean like S is uh, five R. And then the author just plotted a bunch, trying like N five one, ten, ten two, uh, whatever when <laughs> we go. And the the stop at this uh, at ten two, saying like ah, it was good, because like you know it was supposed to go from two to seven. Then if you if you look at the at the densities, it's it's something correct. So now we have our prior. Woo. So we have the prior. We have the data model. We are very close. Uh, no. Eh. No, uh, tick, 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 tick. we need a, a posterior. So how we do that? How, how do we do that? So this is like the, um, of the proportion conjugacies. I just give you the results, but you can read the book and do the demonstration by yourself if you enjoy dem mathematical demonstration. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was a bit harder. So the posterior is like, uh, this this like the arrow I think means set. This mean like we will have a set a vector set. I don't know or you. This is what it 
I think it's mint. I'm not sure that 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 they don't define it, but I think this is this is it. So we'll have like a certain number of try of uh, draw, let's say, and the gamma will the s the s will take the value the s plus the sum of the y trial, and r will be r plus n. So it give also like this is this is true like it give like some intuition like a huge number of trial with low uh, number of um, of y will lower uh, will will uh, we we could tend to lower a bit the distribution. So let's say here they give us the data. The data is on one day six spam. I will call them spam uh, easier on the other day two, on next day two, and the last day one. So we have like no uh, all of our y, uh, of, of the y and the n. So we can uh, calculate the, um, the sum of it, which is 11. Uh, we will be able to add 10 plus 11, which give you 21. We have the number of uh, draw, let's say. Which will give in a six, and then now uh, we can also like I don't know why they calculate the mean here, but we calculate the mean here. That's it. That's just the mean, the new new mean mm -hmm. of it. Uh, okay, then uh, we can also calculate the likelihood. So the, this is the demonstration. I just reproduce the likelihood, and the likelihood kind of like yeah, it's a simple example, but but we see like with all the factorial it can grow evenly. And also like the sum like will be like, can be become more crazy. Uh, and that's it. Uh, and so they have a nice function that can plot it. So this is like the likelihood. So we just added the data and uh, I don't know exactly what that, probably like the ACE uh, at them. Then we have prior, we have data, we have likelihood. We, get the posteriors, which is 21.6, like we said. So this is why like, I think like the emphasis on the um, idea of interpretability, because like, yeah, in, when you learn the conjugate families, you know, we kind of know like what will happen. Uh, I think no, but uh, so you can sh see like, this is like the little interface to do it. So you, this is like, you see like the first two terms are basically like our, our prior. Then this is like what uh, we produce by uh, doing the likelihood. Uh, the sum of the cases on the Y, this is literally called that, and the, and the number of trial. And what we see is apparently like something that's very frequent in this kind of, uh, in the gamma, uh, gamma, uh, gamma Poisson models is yeah. like the between the prior and the likelihood, the posterior will be in the middle of it. Like, uh, like it is like this, the, this is the green part, the posterior, the blue part is still the likelihood. And this was like our prior. So basically, like it's tend to like uh, to be in the middle, and if uh, it's not, we probably fail at something. <laughs> so this is like this is a but, tip they give. And then the more data you get, the more likely it is to be near the likelihood than the prior. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, so that's why I think they're good, like to in to interpret it. I think they are, this is this is true, like at least. So normal, normal conjugate family. Sorry, <laughs> I fail at I'm doing it. <laughs> I will have to ask the next people to do it, and it doesn't look sim. I mean, I, to my understanding, it kind of looks like what we call a quadratic approximation uh, on other other kind of course, uh, because like you are using like the property of two normal distribution, which tend to work good together, but I haven't time to do it. So four letters, it's already late. <laughs> okay, why no simulation in these chapters? 
this is like the last two parts of the this chapter are very short. Like it's two par two paragraphs per basically, and it start to be hard to do. That's basically what they say. And because like we are moving away from what we have done before with sample size equal one to just already for sample size. And with the way we were generating samples, like I don't know if you remember, but like we have we are basically like multiplying every time the um, right, some 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 row in the data frame by the prior to get the new version. So we have to do a bunch of multiplication in the data frame, which will be will start to be hard and increase like the I mean we will have probably like to increase the number to get something like reasonable. But this is a teasing for next chapters, <laughs> where you will we will see like the MC MC I don't know how you call them uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo's, uh, where it will allow us to do that, doing simulation. Critique of conjugate families. Even if the authors said they are flexible, uh, at the end they said like they kind of enforce you in some kind of prior, which will lead like, for example, uh, which example did they give? Uh, uh, did you, did I think they said about um, bimodal. So if, if you've got like um, a distribution where you've got like two peaks or something. Oh yeah, it will totally um, not work. Yeah, that yeah, it because basically the, they haven't got a distribution that neatly fits that. Yeah, this is like basically like they said like, yeah, if you have like some kind of word prior, which doesn't follow like some easy distribution, you cannot use them. Mm. Like you said, like even the one like they give at the, sh the chapter where the distribution is like that, like, you know, this is like, I will try to draw it. This is, this is like the, the and the distribution is, is like that. Well, you, we can assume like some other distributions that look like it, but if we want a distribution that really match this kind of shape, it's not possible to use the conjugate families. Mm. Uh, some also of this, which uh, doesn't allow flat prior. I assume like, for example, the normal normal ask you to use like a, a normal prior, which is not flat. It's assuming yeah. the mean of more importance. Like I assume this is like, I, I will not, I haven't checked it, but I think like the normal normal is kind of the regression to the mean. You want to have some things that's around the mean. You are doing some things that tend to the mean. I think they said the way around it was to have like a normal distribution, but a very, very wide variance. So it's nearly flat. But it will always predict less the, the tail of the distribution. You know, if it will always give more results on the, on the well, on the, on the two like standard deviation than after by yeah. definition yeah which can be handy too like you know it's not necessarily a default <laughs> it's maybe what you want yeah. um that's it and then summary okay i agree with that conjugate priors are easy to compute their interpretable even if i will not be able to redemonstrate them like to like uh gener make the you know multiply the posterior uh, the, the um, prob probability density or mass function to the prior to get the, um, the posteriors. I will not be able to, to do that. But I think like if you learn a few of them, uh, this is nice. Uh, even if after you forget them, let's say like, because like you, uh, you, you just use like uh, computation it's still a good sanity check. I don't know if it's clear, like you can like, you will later produce like distribution thanks to computational power, but you can still check uh, quickly if it's mm. supposed or close to, and I think this is good to have sanity check when you are doing data analysis. So I will, I will uh, give like, so the beta binomial is good when you have uh, a data Y, which is the number of success in a set of N trial. The gamma po uh, Poisson is Y is a count with no upper limit. And the normal normal is when Y is continuous. And I assume uh, we have not flat buyer. This is basically what they have said. 
uh, they introduced also mm. like the edits, like they are produced, I didn't add, but like, because uh, I'm, I'm kind of not sure I will still use their package after the book, but they produce a bunch of, pack, uh, of function that's uh, our wrappers of um, air buzz, uh, by, like air binome or air, po air po like all the um, base uh, R function to produce um, distribution, like uh, and, and a nice wrapper with ggplot. So I don't know, will I still use them? Because like, you know, if you use like BRMS, they also have another wrapper of doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just that's my point of view, but like, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, 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 there wasn't much on programming this week, was there? Really, there was no. There was quite, no, it, yeah. it it was per like uh, doing maths. I mean maths, just mm. writing the function, uh, taking example, try to do the demonstration, and that's it. Maybe in the normal normal, but I don't think so. Like it was just me who was like uh, trying, like for example, uh, on this, because here yeah, I just use like the wrapper of it. Like I, I, I'm pretty sure like you can use Airbus to do it or even like another kind of, and Airbus then convert that in some data frame so you can use ggplot, I mean some table uh, or tidy format so you can use ggplot. So you have like, it, it could be interesting to see how they have done it uh, because like, uh, but that maybe here I, I, have, I have produced it uh, like the classical um, air buzz style. You know, it's just behind it, it's just like, okay, so we want some things that go to zero because we cannot go lower than zero. Yeah. And 12, I assume they picked 12 because like the range was seven and five plus seven make it 12. So mm -hmm. it, it was reasonable to go like that way. And I, I basically like uh, draw like for zero, to 12 uh, on the distribution to get that and plot it as an histogram. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, this is what two line of codes basically per graph and it can be like string, I imagine. So, I mean, obviously this is the aesthetic of that is more appealing, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> this is more pleasant. But oh, we 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 don't go in for we don't go in for graphic snobbery, <laughs> you know. No, we are, we are. <laughs> <laughs> if it's shiny and sparkling, it's better. <laughs> Is it, what you saying is that everything is going to have like a JavaScript base or something, so it all looks like plotly, is it? Or, yeah. Yeah, maybe at some <laughs> times. Uh, but when I'm doing quick data analysis, I admit that I'm, I'm like prefer that. This is just for myself, you know. <laughs> no one will uh, faster the code, better it is. Well, it's, it's very clear. Yeah, but yeah. faster the code, better it is. <laughs> but sometimes you went with the ggplot or whatever solution faster, so who cares? That's it. So that's it for today. I Dion, do you have questions? Let's go back to this. Yes. So, Who's doing next week? Is it Eric doing next week? I think someone is doing next week. I haven't checked. Yeah. But so I have to tell him that you have to do the normal, normal. Because like I'm replacing Eric. He asked it like he couldn't be here. So he asked it like, oh, can you do it? I said, sure, fine. And then I check out the chapter and say, oh, <laughs> what, what, what the hell? What I've said. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I will I will announce it that you can still do the normal normal one. Well, basically, round of applause for doing all of that while you're moving house. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think I will also like I have started check the chapter six. It's huge. I don't know if you have checked. So I don't think we can do it in one time in one session. Mm. Depends. Uh, it's currently. Like something like 30, 35 pages, and it's look dense. Yeah. 
So I will ask also like it maybe we, we are splitting it. I don't know. I will I will ask on the Discord and see what's the option. Yeah, we, That's can, it. We, we can we can split it. That's absolutely fine, isn't it? Really? That's no problem. Yeah, I mean it depends. Uh it depends. Like if if no one I, I mean it depends. Like uh I will ask, I don't know who have do, who is doing it, Eric, maybe. So I will ask I think him it if was. you want to do yeah. So I will I will ask and he will he will see what you want to do. Okay. So I have some bugs to do. So <laughs> smashing. Good luck with moving. Okay. Thank you. Bye. See you, see you soon. Bye. See you next week. Bye.